Hello, good morning and welcome back. And in this video, I'm now going to be leaving Jerusalem and heading with my group to the Dead Sea region. So we've now arrived at our first place, making our way down to the Dead Sea. We've descended a lot in elevation and ears actually were popping in the uh, minivan of our group. And we're now at a place called Qasar el Yahud, which is extremely important pilgrimage site it's where jesus was baptized here on the jordanian river you can see a church in the distance so this is it this is where jesus was baptized we're right on the border i'll show you a shot of the map right now you can see it's quite murky at the moment You can see this is actually the border right here. So this is <laughs> West Bank, Palestine, Israel, whatever you want to call it, and Jordan on the other side. There's actually a security guy just here. And on this side, we have two securities here to mark the border. Extremely fascinating. So both countries can come and pay pilgrimage to this site whether you're a Palestinian in the West Bank or an Israeli, a Jew, a Christian, or you're a tourist in Jordan, whatever it is. People crossed from the Jordanian desert into the Holy Land here. We just came from the hilly green landscape around Jerusalem. And so dramatically things changed into this very flat desert type of scenery. So it's very incredible to see. And now we're at the very point where the stream is, where John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ himself. So after a few hours journey driving alongside the Dead Sea, we're now here at Masada National Park. So after taking the cable car, we're now at the top of Masada. Incredible views of the Dead Sea behind me which I'll explain a bit more about later about why it's so interesting etc but right now we're at Masada which is so famous because King Harrod built a palace at the top here he could see everyone passing through the Dead Sea region and it was his escape his peace eventually the Romans invaded and all 900 or so people who were actually living atop Masada here committed suicide following a siege and then the Romans came up and found all the dead bodies. They would rather have committed suicide than become slaves of the Romans. So an interesting story. We're going inside now to visit the palace. So here is the side of the palace and the incredible lookout over the Dead Sea and the desert landscape surrounding Masada. You can see the palace comprises quite a large area. There are views on this side and of course the cable car where we came from. There's a few more things that I didn't mention, which is that once the Romans came up here, they actually found two or three women left over who didn't commit suicide. And they were the ones who actually told the story of Masada and that's how the story was passed on. Yeah, it's really amazing to walk around here now and considering it was nearly a few thousand years ago, it's so impressive how, you know, so much of it's still standing because you know, it's on top of this place in the middle of the desert. It would be really hard to destroy. And it's a pretty strategic location. So it was built for the reason of being a powerful place. And that still kind of stands true today. You can see here different parts of the palace, actually 30 meters below the top part. And this incredible view here, you can imagine the sunrise. It just gives you an idea how 
much of the feat was achieved by managing to build this place nearly 2,000 years ago in the middle of nowhere. You can take the steps down to reach the lower levels of the palace and also get a different perspective of the viewpoint from this side. Making my way down, it's not every day you get to walk in such dramatic scenery beside these kind of steps. Thousands of years old history. As you can see, not too many people are doing it in this heat. Pretty much made it down to the lower echelons of the palace. A bit closer to the rugged scenery down here. The view from beneath the palace here and the epic scenery surrounding it in this Dead Sea region. So after leaving Masada National Park, we have finally made it to the Dead Sea. Extremely famous place here in the Middle East and very unique. Let me tell you why. It's firstly not actually a sea, it's a lake. The salt content is extremely high. So in many oceans around the world, the average salt content is around three or four percent. Here in the Dead Sea, it is 34 percent you can literally float just by lying backwards or going forwards. We can see Mel over here, who's also on the trip with us. She's just lying backwards like she's sitting on a sunbed, <laughs> but she's actually floating. I can't wait to go inside and have that experience. You can actually see the salt in cubes scattered along the edge of the lake. Because of the salt content, it's actually highly antibacterial. If you have any cuts or anything, they're gonna feel very itchy. Your skin in general might feel very itchy once you go in, but it's also quite a good uh, infection killer if you have any cuts, although it will be a bit painful. There's high levels of potassium and magnesium and all sorts of different minerals in there, and the color of it is this interesting turquoise look. So lots of resorts around here too. This actual beach is owned by the hotel that we're staying at. Only guests can stay here, so this is quite a nicer place to you know, go and swim in the Dead Sea. Other places further north, maybe not as nice, just so you know, it's not all like this, but this is a pretty cool place. All right, in we go for the first time to the Dead Sea. You can see down here, all the salt, sand mixed with the salt. The water is super warm. It's a very strange feeling. It's kind of like oil. You can see at the bottom, it looks like there's almost crystals. Pretty nice resort behind me. You can see the mountains look similar to Masada where we were earlier. Although they're not really mountains, more like just rocky cliff faces. Oh, that's amazing. I'm gonna move my GoPro like this and you can see that I'm literally floating on the water. This is what it's like to float in the Dead Sea. Literally, I'm not putting any effort in at all. And I'm just lying here on top of the water surface. It's amazing. It's so relaxing, but the sun is so bright. How does it feel? It's amazing. Have you seen the floor? Yeah. Look at this. I was talking to my camera. <laughs> the group and I, we all got given some natural salt mud, which is really good for your skin if you have any diseases or anything. 
and I've still got a bit of it on me now but um, we took pictures and everything and then it washed off and we've run out I'm just showing you what's left of it anyway this is my last little trip into the sea I'm gonna go down again and lie back the water is so hot it literally feels like you're in a sauna it's so nice forget about life so relaxing the scenery is so chill as well the color of the water look at when I grab from the bottom of the lake all the salt they're literally like cubes Having been for that amazing, uh, unique swim earlier, I'm now back here in the room I've checked in. Let me show you the view of the balcony. It's super cool, quite uh, a unique place to stay. Probably somewhere that, watch out for that, I'm not gonna forget in some time. You can see the sunsets really slowly here. Unfortunately, the sunset view is uh, on the other side of the hotel that I'm at, but check it out. Great view of the Dead Sea if I focus my camera here. And the Jordanian mountains in the distance. This is the Jordan Valley and that's Jordan. You can actually see it. Really pleasant view. Just chill. I'm gonna do some work and soak in the lake as the sun goes down. It is a lake. So quiet around here that this one car is making all that noise. I don't know if it comes through, but you can really see the colour of the lake from up here and even the salt at the edges just in the middle there. Because it's so easy to float, it's actually not so arduous to swim, I believe. And I bet there are people that probably swim all the time. Oh wow, can you see that military plane flying across the border? So the border between uh, Israel and Jordan is actually in the middle of the Dead Sea just there. There's another one coming, I can hear it. Terrific noise, pretty amazing to see. It's flying pretty much directly over the border which lies right in the middle of the Dead Sea. So Jordan about halfway across then starts. If you swam just to the, one of these nearby pieces of land, you could probably walk all the way through the Dead Sea to Jordan. It's an amazing place to be because there's so much biblical history around this area. I really did a lot yesterday walking around Jerusalem and then afterwards going into the West Bank and meeting with both Jews and Palestinians about the current situation and how they're trying to coexist peacefully and then going to see the Palestinian non-violent organization. And then today, of course, we got up very early and we drove all the way from Jerusalem and stopped at the site where Jesus was baptized. So it's really been a long couple of days and I don't really feel like going out for an evening stroll. So I'm gonna actually end the video here, but I hope it gave you a good idea of what the Jordanian Valley is like, the Dead Sea, you saw me swim in it. It's a really cool place to visit, probably once in a lifetime to go and lie back in the Dead Sea and just experience that 34% <laughs> salt uh, solution in the water. So tomorrow we're heading deeper to a place called the Ramon Crater, which is further south. So stay tuned if you're interested in seeing more. And thanks for watching. Peace.